all characters are a process of learning. It's hard for people to understand who, who watch actors to realize that, that actors come with an ability. They've played other parts. They have some background. When you bring in a drawing, all you have is a drawing. When you have to put in the characters, the little mistakes they make and so on, it's not important to have them talk in a certain way or talk through their nose or something like that. What we want to find out is what the psychiatrists call the displacement activities. This is, this is a displacement activity. It's an activity that has no bearing on what I'm saying. I bring this hand up and I throw this one out and I say, if I'm, if I'm uh, Harry Truman, I talk like this, you know. <laughs> get those guys to talk properly. Huh? So if you're doing Harry Truman in animation, and you, want to be, you have to get that in. <clears throat> so we have to find out what those things are and where Bugs would stumble and where he wouldn't stumble and what kind of character he is. So the character comes in, you have to, starting with, you have to show weight. You have to show that he stands firmly on the ground because that's, that's what makes him believable, is that he does stand like, like, like the marionette or the, the, the marionette, actually the string marionettes. And uh, so there are many things we have to find out about the character. In Bugs' case, the first picture that Bugs made, he was crazy. That was, and the way we soon realized that there's a great deal of difference between being crazy and pretending like you're crazy. The Marx Brothers were pretending like they're particularly Groucho pretending, and he was trying to make sense out of the behavior of his brothers. And uh, that, that gave him a wonderful balance to it. But he was always in there trying to get some sense out of them. And, uh, and Bugs Bunny uh, uh, is a much more human character. Uh, and looking back on him, I, not that I thought about it at the time, but if I had to, to devise a mixture of, of well-known personalities to describe Bugs Bunny, I'd say, he would start out with uh, Professor Higgins, uh, in a quiet living rabbit who was living down in a hole, minding his own business, perhaps pursuing the history of rabbits in Sanskrit or something. And someone comes along and tries to disturb his equanimity. And in so doing, then he, uh, he is not a person like Woody Woodpecker who would go out and, bo and bother anybody. He has to be provoked. And we learned that. It was very important that he be provoked because otherwise he'd be a bully. And, and we didn't want that. We wanted a nice person like, like myself. Somebody does something too, but he, then he comes forward and acts like the hero. At that point, he then becomes something very much like, uh, like Errol Flynn, perhaps, or Doug Fairbank Sr. And so now we have two strong personality traits there. Now we need one more, because Bugs would rather solve his problems orally than he would any other way. So we take a, a dollop of Dorothy Parker and put it into this mixture and stuff that into a rabbit skin, you got Bugs Bunny. And we didn't know at the time, but that's a way of kind of analyzing to find what is in there. Because it's very important for Bugs. And, and, and Bugs very seldom, everybody's talking about Bugs hitting people. Look, in my knowledge, in all, any picture I ever made or any other picture that Frizz ever made, I never heard of, of him hitting anybody over the head with anything. And that wasn't the way it worked. He, in order to establish the character, he had to take pleasure in the in, in, in defending himself. And if he had the choice between running or, or even conquering somebody, he would prefer the track of obscuring them, getting them off balance. And that's much better, much stronger. Better, better comedy, too.